and welcome to another episode of The Morning Meeting. I'm your host, Julio Briones. If this is your first time on the show, uh, please you know, subscribe to our channel and so you can stay informed of future episodes. And if you're a returning visitor, you know, thank you very much for your support. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that like button. Also, leave us a comment below if there's anything that you know, you'd like to ask our guest expert today or if there's just any comment on how we're doing, we do look at every comment and try to respond back. In the world of business, communication is key. It, there's nothing more important than being able to properly get your message and your brand across. Uh, in today's world, understanding creative and new ways to get that message out there, and sometimes on short notice, is very important. Today, we have Brian Cohen with us. He has over 35 years in business. He is a founder of the Long Island Speakers Bureau and the host of the Strategies of Success podcast. Hi, Brian. Thank you, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Leo. It's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, thank you for being here. We, we always welcome you know, experts in different fields, and we appreciate you taking your time out of your day. So for the benefit of our viewers, tell us a little bit about who you are and you know, what do you do and when you're not sitting here having a meeting with us in the morning. <laughs> well, sometimes I'm standing up in front of a live crowd. But, but, oh, you know, fantastic. Obviously, <laughs> that time has changed around a little bit over here. But uh, I've been uh, working uh, with the Long Island Speed. Well, working, you know, I founded the Long Island Speakers Bureau and also Strategies of Success. And I have found that throughout my career in the you know, 35 plus years in, in the business environment, that communication skills is, is everything. And it's not just a tagline. You know, it is a way to one, stand out from everybody else and also to take advantage of different opportunities. I mean, I got one clear example of that is that there was, I was working for a company, it merged with another company and nobody wanted to go out and tell the sales force exactly what they really needed to do. To do because then the information was going to be necessary, but it was also going to be negative. I raised my hand, you know, I was, I was comfortable standing in front of a crowd delivering information that was not the greatest. And I, you know, after it was over, I got a lot of thank yous from the sales force. I was told by a few of the branch managers that it was not gonna be well received. Well, the initial reaction was it was not well received, but they needed to know the whole thing. But it wound up, I wound up staying with that company for an extra year because of it and got a chance to travel on the Eastern Seaboard, making those presentations, mm -hmm. it felt really good. So yeah, it was a clear example of how communication skills helps to create an opportunity, but it helps on the branding side all the time. Yeah, I, absolutely. I tell this, I have a, a daughter who's in college studying business, and I, I tell her, if, if you want to get somewhere in your career, learn how to clearly and effectively communicate and share your brand. You know, so, um, you know, just keeping along with this, how you mentioned branding how does understanding how to communicate and display your brand help especially newer and start, uh, startup businesses yeah well a lot of it also has to do with confidence too and i'll go back to your daughter on that one too so mm -hmm. if she's in that classroom or if we're in a board meeting or if we're at a networking event and a mm -hmm. general question goes out and you have the answer but you don't have the confidence to raise your hand well you don't have the answer anymore, do you? Somebody else does. No. So yes, same thing. absolutely. Same thing holds true in that school environment. It's mm -hmm. the first person that raises the hand with the right answer that does it. But first things first, it says you got to take that first step in order to move forward. You got to be the first one to raise your hand in order to possibly be part of that. But the confidence translates back over, you know, into the business sense. And it really, like the message I like delivering out over there is that you do need to be able to speak and speak effectively at a moment's notice because you don't know when opportunities are going to come up. Like this interview, I knew we were going to do the interview. So, you know, you have a chance to prepare and do the rest of that. But if you're out at a networking event or you're just out and you run across somebody, you know, in that elevator that you didn't expect to see, boom, you mm -hmm. got to be able to communicate and you got to be able to do it confidently where you know what your story is, where you know what your message is. And, and that really is your brand. More than anything else, that is your brand. It's how you interact with somebody at that moment's notice. Absolutely. Actually, um, you know, just on an off note of that, we actually have a video 
on under the um, you can check the playlists and see it's about communicating your idea the the four key messages the four key parts that make up any clear branding message and that that is one of them you know being able to identify what what it is that you do and that's fantastic sure. moments notice absolutely yeah look if you're at a networking event and i can't clearly tell you what i do I host podcasts that are focused on people that are got that are moving forward, that are looking to explore different ideas. So if I can't say that quickly and concisely, you're mm -hmm. not going to remember it, are you? <laughs> right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> and that's the whole big thing, right? At a, at a networking event, or when you are looking for people to refer you, you need to be. It was a tomato was the phrase I got top of mind awareness through others, but they got to spit your story out. And if they can't do that, it's not nope. going to help. If you can't spit it out, then they got nothing to share with you. I'll phrase that more professionally. Spit it out, communicate it in a very business <laughs> fashion. <laughs> yes. And, and you know, like I said, yeah, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. This is that I, I could never stress this enough. Um, for a long time, as, as you know, I, I was doing sales training. And, um, you know, for a home care business, that was one of the big things. You have 30 seconds to 45 seconds to convince somebody that doesn't need your services to put their job on the line, to convince somebody who desperately needs your services to work with you above everyone else that, they, that they've been working with for years. So it, it, clear communication, good confidence, and really knowing what value you bring to the table. 100% very clear very important uh, message to be able to get across and let's not forget the listening skills that go in there you know who's yes. really a good salesperson somebody who sees the issues that somebody else has without that person even realizing and many times they don't they don't see the issue that they have and if you could see mm -hmm. that clearly and you could communicate your value add you could make sure that your value that you are proposing to them fits into that problem that they have that you are now going to make them a little bit more aware of without them without coming across as a salesman where they come up right. with the idea said, you know i've been having that kind of an issue it's funny you mentioned love that sentence mm -hmm. it's funny you mentioned yes um i actually am a big fan of the black swan negotiator training have you ever seen them fantastic organization but one of the things that they stress in all of their trainings is what you're looking for is for the person that you're talking to to say, you know what, that's right. Not your right, not yes, but that's right. And I think that's one of the most powerful, one of the most powerful messages that you can get whenever you're trying to get someone to go and think along the same route that you are. And if you're trying to point out somebody's need for value, Fantastic, fantastic, uh, fantastic point there. Right. And I'll All throw right. that into communication skills, right? If you're going to give a speech in front of an audience, whatever the thing is, you want them to be inside of that speech. You want them to be able to see themselves mm -hmm. in that story. And that becomes, it's the same thing as the sales side of it. Once they, once they mention it like that, not that I'm right, but they see it, that situation being their situation. Yes. They're seeing the solution. They're seeing the whole process in there. And that's great. Now you're working as one. Exactly. Exactly. So now if I were a new business owner and I'm coming here, I'm like, Hey, Brian, listen, you know, I'm really struggling. I, I don't know moving along, trying to get forward and to move ahead and to try to get that first possibly sale or that first client. What three tips would you want me to walk away with at the, by the end of our conversation? Well, besides that you should be able to share your story in a nice, clear, concise, concise manner right. is you know what your story is. Let's just start right there. You know, I, I've mm -hmm. had people that I was going to interview. I, I was doing a podcast for years. I did it on blog talk radio and I would interview people about what their story was and what message that they wanted to deliver. Mm -hmm. And it was a shocking amount of people that just really didn't know. They didn't know what message yeah. they wanted to, to share. So first things first, why are you doing what you're doing? What is that? And what is your value with it? And it shouldn't be that hard of a question, but sometimes it is. And it's not how do you get paid? It is what is your value? We can take a real estate agent, for example. Mm -hmm. What is a real estate, you know, if I ask a real estate agent, you know, give me the, you know, the elevator pitch, nine times out of 10, they help people find houses. No, 
they help people find the right home so they can, you know, right. enjoy the neighborhood and, and, and just be part of that whole, um, that whole experience. That's what they're doing. They're creating an experience for the person, especially a first time home buyer that is not really yeah. too clear on it. So don't lead with how you get paid, lead with what it is, what the true value is. So that would be number one, know what your value is and know what your value is for one. Second thing is you got to clearly understand your target market. Too many times it's like, you know, who, who are you looking for as a customer? Everybody, mm -hmm. not everybody. <laughs> it's not, it really is not. It's not, it's not. No, and no. you're absolutely right. <laughs> Yeah. If you're a coach, you're like, oh, I'm a, you know, I'm not, but you know, I, I work with the businesses, you know, the forward looking, yeah. that kind of thing. So you get somebody who says, well, I'm a life coach. Okay. So who's your perfect, you know, who's your target market? Who are you looking to get in front of? <laughs> well, everybody, because everybody needs a life coach. Well, I, let's just make the assumption everybody needs a life coach, <laughs> but not everybody is coachable. Right. If that's the right. case. It's no longer everybody. So doing that yep. so clearly know why it is that you're doing whatever it is that you're doing understand completely who your target market is and then the, the third one and this gets to be a little more gray i think because there's so many different avenues to go to you know if we go back in the day and i'll date myself on this you know there was seven tv channels right the oh, local nice. radio show so mm -hmm. you know we all gravitated to the same thing now there's so many things but you got to understand where your target market actually is and and that and then you can really devise some sort of a marketing plan that goes along with it. It sounds simple, but it'd be shocking how many people don't really think about that. Focus yeah. way too much on the product or the service, not the customer. Right. Yeah, and I agree. That's something that in my line of work I, I find a lot. You know, um, I, I do tend to focus on the very niche market of the healthcare space, you know, home care and everything else, and I. Go, to go back to your question of who your audience is or who your target is, everyone who's over 65, well, no, no, it's not, not really. Are you looking for people that can afford to pay privately or are you looking for people that have Medicaid? Are you looking for people that need companionship or that need more medical care? Yeah, it, it, you're really drilling down and understanding who your market is. I, I agree wholeheartedly with you on this. It's a, a skill set that so many people just fail to grasp. They really fail to understand, you know, to be able to say who they help and why they help them. Right. And that's where it's important to bring in a coach or, or a third yeah. person, somebody that can give you a clear answer on the whole thing. Keep going back to the word exactly. clear. So look, if you're going to go to a family member and ask a family member, so, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and this is the way we're going with it. You know, what do you think? Well, understand who you're, who you're speaking to. You're speaking to mm -hmm. a family member. Most family members want to see you succeed, right? Yes. So that means they don't want to see you fail is the other side of that. So they mm -hmm. may not be that supportive of you taking a chance on something, or they may be a little bit more, may hold back a little bit more instead yeah. of telling you what you really need to hear, not what you want yep. to hear. So a coach, yeah. and if it's not a coach, it's a mentor or somebody, that could give you a real honest opinion on it. Uh, you know, and, that, and that's a big, that's a very big important thing to go and do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I love that analogy because you're, you're absolutely right. Sometimes the wanting you su to succeed is nowhere near as important as understanding that your person you're talking to just doesn't want you to fail. And if not wanting you to fail means convincing you to never start, that might settle better with them than with you. Yeah, yeah, great point. Yeah, you know, and they're, yeah. and they're kids. They, 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 they're just taking a chance, taking a chance, and doing something risky is two different, two different things. Yes. Yeah. All right. You, you so, know. all right, Brian. So, thank you very much for coming on. We really appreciate your wisdom and input. And <clears throat> this has been another episode of the morning meeting. I'm your host, Hula Bronas. And don't forget, if you enjoyed today's episode, to give us a like, subscribe, and leave a comment below and tell, let us know how we did. Thank you again, Brian. You have a great rest of your day.